The successful destruction of military facilities on Russian territory by our drones indicates that the Russian Federation's rear facilities are not protected against equipment created by Ukrainian engineers. This was stated in an interview with Radio NV by the co-founder of Drone UA, an Ukrainian expert in the field of unmanned technologies, Valery Yakovenko. The past few months, almost a year, was spent on Ukraine working, increasing the quantity and quality of its own equipment that can operate at remote distances and hit the rear facilities of the enemy's military infrastructure. And today we have confirmation that those developments that were predicted and stimulated by the Ukrainian state from Ukrainian entrepreneurs and companies are already reaching a certain apogee. In particular, damaging or reaching these objects that need to be destroyed, he said. According to the expert, today we can say that the range of destruction by Ukrainian technologies can be thousands of kilometers. And we see certain confirmation of this, that this is exactly what is happening in the swamps. The fact that military facilities are being hit, the fact that they are being hit successfully, indicates that the rear facilities of the Russian Federation, Unayan, are not protected against equipment created by Ukrainian engineers. And this is another fact that no technology stands still, Yakovenko said. He noted that the ecosystem of Ukrainian-made drones technologies is developing dynamically. And this once again demonstrates the fact that there are no safe places in the swamps. All military targets, according to the statements of our leaders, must be hit. And it is precisely Ukrainian equipment that can become the reason for this, the result of its use, the expert said. He also explained why enemy drones are almost invisible in some areas of the front. Enemy drones, especially when we talk about reconnaissance equipment, are used as spotters. For example, in the Kherson region, reconnaissance drones quite often spotted kamikaze drones that could fly through the Dnieper and harm civilians. When the Ukrainian military began shooting down such drones with kamikaze drones, the number of terrorist attacks against civilians using kamikaze drones from the enemy side decreased significantly. Therefore, it is critical to destroy such targets, the expert said. A former classmate of the chief of the general staff of the Russian Federation, Valery Gerasimov, was found murdered in his home. The body, wrapped in a carpet, was discovered by the police who were called by the wife of the murdered man who could not get into his home. This was reported by the publication Business Online. The publication says that retired Russian Armed Forces Colonel Valery Kakin, who at one time held the position of deputy head of the Kazan Tank School, was killed. Death occurred as a result of multiple stab wounds. The murder victim was found by police officers who responded to a call from Maria Gorchunova, the owner of the apartment and wife of Valery Kakin. A criminal case was opened on the fact of the murder. There is no information yet on how the investigation is progressing. There is no information about what happened in open sources. It is only known that the murdered man celebrated Tanker's Day, the day before, at the school where he had previously worked and where graduates traditionally gathered on that day. After the event, he went home, where he stayed alone for the night since his wife was at the dacha at that time from where she returned on the day of the crime. According to media reports, the Kremlin has turned its attention to Gerasimov's people. On May the 23rd, it became known that Lieutenant General Vadim Shamarin was detained in the Russian Federation. He is involved in a bribery case. Law enforcement agencies say that Shamarin's home was also searched. It is known that Shamarin's case is being heard by the 235th Military Court. Back in 2020, Deputy Chief of the Russian General Staff Aslanov was arrested in a bribery case. In 2024, two of Shoigu's deputies, Ivanov and Kuznetsov, were already detained. It is possible that the Kremlin will not stop there. Experts stated that Belusov could leave only two or three people from Shoigu's former circle in the Russian Defense Ministry.